Do you have to learn a certain language for one reason or another? Are you in this position where you can't really choose to learn the language of your passion, but you have to learn one that you're not necessarily passionate about, or perhaps you outright dislike? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome back to my channel. I love to have you back here. If you're new, my name is Stephanie, and I make videos on the topic of language learning as I love learning languages. In today's video, I'm going to cover the topic of how to learn a language that you don't like. And this is a question that I've actually gotten from some subscribers. They tell me this story that they've been dragging some language around for years and perhaps they've also been distracted by other ones that they prefer to learn and learn those, but then they want to go back and learn that language that they feel like they wasted so much time on and they feel embarrassed even that they don't speak it. And so they ask me, you know, how do I learn this language that that I just simply don't like. Or there could be other situations in which you have to learn a language. For example, in school, you might have to learn a language that you don't necessarily want to. Now, I have spent one year in a US high school, so I know that there you have the luxury of picking certain classes and you kind of have different classes with different um, students, with different classmates, etc. In some other countries, such as my own home country of Bulgaria, and I assume most countries in Europe and perhaps in other regions of the world, I'm not terribly familiar with differences between educational systems, but in some countries like my own, what happens is that you kind of, you have to stick with whatever program you enrolled in, you kind of, you go and you choose a school that's focused on languages or on science or an art, you know, and then you kind of have to stick with that, with your classmates, you're always having the same classes, all of you together. Um, and then maybe you're stuck with a certain foreign language that you wouldn't have chosen for yourself, but you have to do it. Or in your job, for example, sometimes you have to learn a language for your job and there's just no choice that you have about that. It's like, we're gonna open an office in that country and you have to know at least a little bit of the language, etc. There could be many situations like that in life where external factors, quote unquote, force you to learn a language. Or alternatively, you could be forcing yourself, like some of my subscribers were mentioning, they're like, I know I should cut my losses, but I don't want to because I spent so many years on that language and I wanna get over that plateau and like push it to the finish line and get it over with and feel like I speak it because I feel embarrassed for not speaking it. So I've also had that side of the coin and I get it. And whether you are, uh, made to learn language by outside forces such as a job or school or something or you are kind of making yourself learn it because you know that this language is super useful or because you know that you already studied in school and you kind of want to wrap it up and you feel like you should be speaking it or for any other internal reasons that you're making yourself do it sometimes the answer is not don't make yourself do it sometimes you really want it because it's super useful in your life and because you actually need it so for those types of situations in which you have to learn a certain language for one reason or another, but it's not the language that speaks to your heart, it's not the language you're passionate about, it's just not one of those languages, well then, I'm here for you. I also had this experience kind of with German that I had to learn it at school and I didn't really, like I can't say I didn't like it and like I hated it or something like that. No, it wasn't the situation, but it was never like my most, the language I was most passionate about. And so I, it's been a while since I first started learning German and I'm still not fluent because I keep getting distracted by other languages and I kind of get fluent in them first and then so, you know, I understand that and I understand this point of view. And although my case is not as extreme, I also understand the extreme cases because I also have certain languages that I don't want to learn and I haven't started learning them because for that reason. Now that might change in the future, I don't know. But in any case, I feel like we've all had this um, type in which we don't like the language or maybe we don't mind it, but we're just kind of feeling flat about it. We don't particularly care either way. So whatever your situation, this video is going to have some very useful tips for you. Tip number one, focus on the why. I can't emphasize this enough because I always talk about how important passion is in language learning. And if that is missing, you'd better have a strong why because something has to tide you over. With language learning, it is extremely important to like what you're doing, to be passionate about it, yes. But sometimes, if the language is not one you're crazy about, you have to have some reasons to learn it, and those reasons have to be beyond, because I have to. It's uh, 
it's something that you really need to focus on before you can begin learning in earnest and like learning well because it's something that's gonna help you when you want to give up and you want to let it go because um, you don't like it or something so focus on the why think about why you're learning that language you might feel like you have to because your family is from a certain country and you want to be able to connect with them even though you don't feel a great passion it can happen even for your own culture sometimes you know it feels so distant you grew up in another country it can happen um, so imagine, imagine yourself, visualize how amazing it's going to be once you're able to speak with all of your family members abroad or your boss is making you do it. Visualize how great that's going to be for your career, how many benefits you're going to get, how you're probably going to get that promotion, how you're going to do really well or how your salary is going to increase by X percent because there's actually um, a lot of studies now that show that speaking other languages can actually give you a salary boost. So any of those things. Or think about, for example, how you're going to do great in school. If you have to learn it in school and you're going to get awesome grades, you're going to get into better college, etc. So whatever the situation, there's always a why. There's always something on that's waiting for you on the other side. And once you get there, you're going to be able to speak that language and that's going to bring you benefits. So imagine what those benefits are and write them down somewhere and then every time that you feel like you want to quit go back to your why and see why you're doing this you know see yourself enjoying those benefits and you're gonna find a little bit of extra motivation to keep going tip number two explore something to connect with within the language or within the culture or the country so what i mean in this case is if there's some language that doesn't sound that great you're not super crazy about it what culture is it connected to or what country does it come from maybe you can find something there to enjoy and that's going to propel you to actually develop some passion for that language so if you don't want to study a certain language imagine what do you like about the country Maybe you've never been to the country. If you can afford to go there, that could be a great way to spark your interest. Or if not, how about you check out like an author from that country that is really famous and who has great works of literature that you might enjoy. Or perhaps um, the food of that country is amazing and you can enjoy that and you can go to local restaurants in your city and enjoy that food and form this connection at least a little bit because sometimes experiences like that can be super powerful and translate over to a language and give you some passion that was not there before i'm not saying you're gonna go crazy about that language all of a sudden but it's gonna give you something a little bit to like within that language and culture or perhaps you can find some artists that you like from that country and you can listen to their music and that can be your connection or perhaps they have amazing movies and cinema culture or um i don't know like some brand that comes from that country that is similar to another one you like or that is within something that you that you love for example i don't know um, a power manufacturer that makes clothes that are suitable for your specific sport that you play anything truly anything just try to find something that comes from that country that you can like something that comes from that culture that you can like i guarantee there's always like at least something that we can enjoy tip number three is to use a topic that you're already passionate about and utilize that to learn your target language here's what i mean by that i've talked before about comprehensible input how much i love it and i feel like many polyglots on the internet have also shared their love for it because input-based learning is just great in terms of helping you retain vocabulary grammar um, expressing yourself etc it just makes speech flow and it really helps with language learning and i'm a huge fan of it um, but I think in particular, when it comes to a language that you don't like, if you pick something that you're already crazy about, it can really make the difference. In particular, if you found in the previous tips that you can't really connect with something within the culture or you can't really, or your why doesn't seem to be motivating you enough, this can be super useful. It can also be super useful in combination with other tips, don't get me wrong, but I feel like this is where you can really use that passion that you already have for something else. So I feel like this should be something that you really like because you're already not feeling great about the language you have to learn. So pick something you're super passionate about. If you have an interest in astronomy, in history, in fashion, in cars, I don't know, whatever it is, use that to learn the language. Seek out content creators, for example, that talk about that kind of stuff in your target language, because it's usually great because it shows you the way the language is spoken naturally, but it also you are going to be able to use the topic that you care about, that you love so much, and you're going to want to consume content on that topic 
and you're gonna be doing it in your target language so even though you're not crazy about it you're crazy about the topic and that need to want to learn more about your topic and to want to get more of that content that you usually love is gonna help so much the same can be done with books uh, with some books that you really wanted to read forever you can also use that as, as a strategy um, same thing can be done with uh, magazines from topics you're crazy about or podcasts anything truly doesn't matter what exactly it is whether it is video audio or the written word doesn't matter at the end of the day your love for that topic is going to help so much because you're seeing this content that's in another language and you want to understand and that's what drives you to learn even without having great love for the language it is also i've mentioned this in other videos but it's also suggested that this is how children learn because they really want to understand what their parents are saying and that's what drives them to pick up their native languages and so you can mimic that in that way and you don't have to necessarily be that passionate about the language you just have to be super passionate about the topic so use that to your advantage whenever you don't feel great about learning a certain language but you kind of have to for whatever the reason tip number four make it a netflix language this is what i've done many times actually with both languages that i love and languages that i'm not feeling that great about currently i've done this with almost any language it's cannot do it with every language because not every language is available on Netflix but I feel like well Netflix or Disney Plus or HBO like whatever whatever streaming platform I think those are great because you can just choose to change your audio language your subtitle language and all of a sudden you're watching a show dubbed in another language obviously original content is great because dubbing is never as good as hearing the original voice of the actors um, but if you can really find a show or a movie that you like from your target country, then you can certainly find one that you already love and watch it with a different audio. And I feel like this can be super helpful because even if you don't like that language that much, even if you don't want to dedicate time to learning it and like using a book or using an app or, you know, doing any of the traditional learning methods to learn it and you don't feel like it and you can't find a way to make it work, put on your favorite TV show and just have the audio in a different language. I guarantee that works so well. And when you're a beginner, you can actually, even if you don't know any of that language, it can work for you, especially with like a TV show you've already seen and you kind of know the story, you know the jokes, you know what it's about. And you can just kind of, even at the very beginner level, still understand what is being said and you can pick up the language that way, especially if you have subtitles, that's gonna help boost learning so much more. Subtitles in the language or in, in your native one, in your target one, or in both maybe at the same time, if you're using an extension like Language Reactor, all of that can be super helpful. Or you can use a VPN, I'm gonna link an option down below, um, that you can also take advantage of that in order to tap into content from other countries. And then you can also use that as, as a way to even hear more authentic content that's not dubbed, that just comes from the country of your target choice. And you can, yeah you can make it like in your leisure time you can use your leisure when you're watching tv when you're watching movies you can use that and you can learn language that way so because you chess are you're gonna enjoy watching the stuff that you usually watch you already like that stuff you're just gonna do it in another language and it's not gonna be that big of a stretch and it's not gonna be that difficult for you passion be there or not Tip number five and my last tip is actually a collection of small tips that I group under the name of discipline because I feel like sometimes all of the motivation in the world, all the tips that I've given you before that kind of aim to boost your passion or to combine that language with something that you already like to do, like read about the topics you love or watch TV, still there is going to be that part of it that's gonna have to be with about discipline you can't always rely on motivation sometimes it has to be about discipline sometimes you don't even have the motivation to learn a language you love because you're just not feeling it which i'm not saying that you have to force it um but with languages you don't like you're gonna not feel like it like almost all of the time probably i don't know it depends but many times you're not gonna feel like it so it's very important to flex that discipline muscle and to develop it and to learn to be disciplined so whether that means booking some time in your calendar making it sure that no matter what you're gonna do it or whether it means telling somebody about it so they can hold you accountable this can be super useful sometimes other people holding you accountable 
is a great way to make sure that you actually get it done or whether you need to go through the whole habit building process. You know, there's this famous saying that you need 21 days for something to become a habit and then it's from then on, it's just much easier to keep. You know, you can do that as well, but in, in general, use all of those productivity techniques, all of those discipline te techniques, all of those like stay on top of it techniques in order to make sure that you're gonna do it. And a book that I've had great things about and I've actually like started to look into more now and to read is uh, Atomic Habits. And it's this book that's like, it has a lot of information. I'm gonna link it in the description as well, but a lot of information helps you like form good habits and make sure that you get this like, 1% change at a time and that, you know, day after day you can keep on building and keep on creating those new good habits. So that can be useful. Check it out and, um, you know, use some of the advice in there because it can be great to build that habit of learning a language. And why that is great is because, as I said, motivation is only going to take you as far. You really need discipline if you have to achieve something. And with languages you're not crazy about, I assume you're gonna need a lot of discipline because probably there are languages that you need to learn for a specific reason. It's not just for your own enjoyment. So it's probably gonna be this thing where you have to do it because you need to reap the benefits of it, because you need it for your job. You need it for that trip you're gonna take. You need it for that client that lives abroad. You need it for your to connect with your family on a different continent, whatever it might be. So I think of making sure that your discipline about it can be very useful. So there you have it. Those were my tips on how to learn a language that you don't like or that you're perhaps indifferent about. I believe those tips can be used no matter whether you're not feeling so great about the language or you're indifferent about it or you absolutely hate it even. Or perhaps when you're learning a language that you might like but you kind of lost your motivation a little bit these days, you've kind of uh, feeling not so great about it, you can use those tips in that moment as well. Whenever you're feeling a lack of motivation, you can uh, use those tips to try to get that spark back. Or as per my last tip, make sure that you build the discipline back up so that you can continue learning and meet your language learning goals. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. I'm open to answering anything. Like and subscribe if you're interested in that type of content. And I will see you here next time with my next video. Bye for now and have an amazing day or evening.